Alex Pettit here bringing you all the latest from IBC 2023. I'm on the Lucid Link stand. Lucid Link is a company I've been really interested in. I've done some videos on it on my channel already, so check out those if you haven't. I'm with Alex, who is going to talk us through the product, do it, give us a little demo. So I first, I, I guess, what is Lucid Link? How does it work? Who might be interested in it? I've fired a load of questions over to you. Give us the lowdown. Thanks, Alex. It's great to be here with you. Good to see you. Well, Lucidlink is a storage collaboration platform, and we help people access their data from the cloud in real time. We're here at IBC to talk to customers and demonstrate the platform, primarily to find out the kind of challenges that we know content creators have. They're working with very large files, yep. and if they want to collaborate with people around the world, they have to transfer, usually, that data. They'll be doing things like uploading and downloading data through more traditional cloud storage platforms, or they might even ship disks to each other through the post, yep. or they might use file transfer or acceleration services to do that. Now, talking to our customers, we know that brings in lots of challenges with their workflow. It adds delays, it's insecure as disks may be lost. There's complications for versioning because everybody has their own copy of the file. Relinking projects is a, is a time suck that the creatives yeah. don't want to do. So we're demonstrating Lucidlink, uh, which is a new way of doing it. It's completely different from those other cloud providers that you may have seen which are great for small documents like Word documents and things like that, but they, in reality they weren't designed for the rich media workflows. Our customers and content creators around the world work with very large files. They work with lots of files, they need to collaborate with people around the world, and that's why it's very challenging to use the existing solutions to solve, to solve them. So Lucidlink, we basically offer four uh, pillars. We talk about instant collaboration, which I'll demonstrate in a minute. We talk about sharing instant access to data so we can make terabytes of data appear on any desktop in the world. And the key thing is the users don't have to download that data from the cloud to start working with it in their that's apps. That's been the thing that's blown my mind as I've been using it, that it streams the data in the same way that when you stream a show on Netflix, it doesn't just, you know, it streams just the parts it needs. It does that for your, your files as well. Absolutely, and that's usually the, draw, the jaw drop moment yeah, that we yeah, get when we give the demonstration. The other thing we like to talk about is our safety and security and the fact we offer a familiar workflow. And we do that by basically sitting behind the applications that they use. So we're compatible with any of the NLEs uh, that are out there or any of the applications that, that you know, creatives are already working with, whether it's in the video space or the, the image space or whatever it might be. Today I'll give you a quick demo on the Adobe Please suite do. and we'll go from there. So first of all, I want you to imagine this scenario. Let's say we're creative users, we're sat here in Amsterdam and we're waiting to work on a project. Now let's imagine we've got a team out in Los Angeles, the other side of the world. It could be a production team like this yep. doing a recorded content, could be a live event, could be an existing uh, project with the data and the files. What we'd have to do to get us working on it here in Amsterdam is transfer that data using the mechanisms I mentioned earlier. Yes. This might mean a slow upload and then a slow download and then replicated media will relink and will start working. It might mean shipping a drive. It might mean transferring the data. All of these approaches end up with duplicated or replicated data everywhere you have an editor. So we're all working on our own versions. Everyone has to relink, and it's really confusing yes. and a bit of a time suck, which obviously we don't want to do. There's also security implications you know, from losing drives and so on. Instead of that, we're going to show you how two people or three people or as many people as you want can work from a single space in the cloud, a lucid link file space. And I want you to imagine behind that logo is the infinite scale and performance of the, the hyperscale cloud providers that everybody is familiar with. So we're going to show two things. We'll show uh, Los Angeles uploading new data into LucidLink. Okay. And in your mind, I want you to compare how much quicker that is to the more traditional methods of sharing data. And we'll also provide access to existing data that's already in the cloud. And you'll see it appear on our desktop here and we'll, we'll start working. Right, okay. So let's take a look. Remember, we've got two desktops. We've got uh, us. On the, floor, on the ground here in Amsterdam and a remote user. So the green desktop is us in Amsterdam. And we're here at a conference with you know, conference internet, which isn't the best. I can vouch for that. Yeah. <laughs> and we've got what we call the Lucidlink client installed. What this client does is connect us up into that single source of data in the cloud, which is sitting with a cloud provider. Important thing to remember, all the data that you see here isn't on this machine. It's in the cloud, okay? However, when I want to access this file space, I can do so through the standard applications on, on the Mac OS operating system. We also support Windows and Linux, by the way. 
So we can see it just mounts as a drive, as I think you've mentioned in some of your other yeah. videos. And we've got access to a specific part of the file space. Here we've just got user folder. I'm logged in actually as a user called Mac1. We can see, and so we've got access to some data. Now it looks like it's already here, but it's not. It's in the cloud. But I can work with it in, in any application that, um, that's installed. So whether it's Finder for preview yep. or um, VLC for playing it back video. It plays back as if it is a drive connected locally. Exactly. But it's not. <laughs> but it's not. And remember, we're only pulling the data that the application's requesting. So if I hit pause, we haven't actually brought down the second half of this file. Yep. And I can jump to any part of any timeline, and Lucid Link will just deliver the data on demand. So to me, as an end user here in Amsterdam, it, it just looks the same. Exactly, it feels the same. That's a really simple example of playing back data that's already in the cloud. Let's now jump over to our other machine. Remember the map with the two users? So this guy here, this is a virtual machine. This is running, I think it's in Germany, but for the sake of the demo, it's in LA. It could be anywhere in the world. This user is connected to the same file space, only this time they're logged in as an admin. That gives you access to a control panel where you can modify the permissions for the users, which we'll look at in a moment. The other thing being an admin gives you is access to all of the data. So whilst us down here in Amsterdam only see a subset, the admins can see everything. However, if I jump in to the same folder, we were Mac 1, Mac one yeah. live upload demo, let's create a new directory. Now remember we talk about real-time collaboration. I can create a, a Popped drive up straight away. instantly from the other side of the world. So let's put Alex live in there as our folder name. That's going to update for everyone around the world instantly. What I'm going to do is jump into that, and I'm going to upload a new file from this remote machine. OK, so imagine we're a, a, a camera team over in LA or Germany, wherever it is. We want to get this content into, um, into Amsterdam. So I'm going to select this folder, and I'm just going to drag. This is not in the cloud. This is on my desktop on this other machine into the file space. So I'm doing an upload. Now, if this was one of the normal providers, a synchronization service or you know, a file delivery service, we would have to wait for this transfer to complete before we'd be able to open it here in Amsterdam. We can even track the upload as that user to see uh, how much data we've got left to upload. And everybody can see that the upload is currently taking place. The really interesting thing is if I select this file over here in Amsterdam, we can see that it's a growing file. Yeah. It's getting bigger and bigger. Exactly, but the applications can already understand it. Not only can we view the thumbnail in a normal Finder application, even as the file is still uploading, we're going to be able to play that back in real time wow. before it's even in the cloud, which is incredible. So um, as I say, normally you would have to wait for this upload to complete. We would have to then download this file. We're working with replicated media, very challenging for everybody involved. So yeah, hopefully you can see how that's completely different. Offers a lot of time saving. For yeah, I mean, our we're watching it back now here in Amsterdam. But if you think if you're using other services, because the file still hasn't finished completing uploading, this person here in Amsterdam wouldn't even be able to see no, the file. No, and even once it had finished uploading, they've got we'd to still have to download, download it. it. So yeah. we're saving hours and hours and hours of time for our customers, which is fantastic. This is a quick demo we give to demonstrate what's unique about the product, which is removing the need to upload and download complete files in order to work with them in your applications. So let's move on to the next demo, which is sharing access to an existing data set that's already in the cloud. I'm going to stop that. And let's go back to our admin and load our control panel. So in the control panel, we're able to define what the other users can see. Remember, I'm an admin here. So if I jump into my user tab, and remember, I'm logged in in Amsterdam as Mac1, we can see currently I've got access here to a few folders. So that's why we were only to see, see that subset. I could provide new permissions yep. um, to unlock data that's already there in the cloud directly, or I could put the user in a group. So let's do that. Let's jump into a group and add the Mac user into it. Now, before I click that button, let's see what they've got currently got access to. So let's go back to my file space. Currently, we've just got the user folder. I'm going to put them in this group. Let's see how long it takes for the data to become accessible. Simply adding them into a group. Straight away. 
could be hundreds of terabytes of data that's appeared. Now, this user might never have seen this, this data before. Let's come back out and have a look. Inside the media folder, we've only got what we need. Actually, there's hundreds of gigabytes of data in there, but the user, because of the groups, has only got access to what they need. They can also see a Premiere project file. So let's load WinMac1. Let's, we've been assigned this job. It's a commercial for a, a, botanical, um, a botanical company. So there we go. I mean, it was literally that quick, Time right? open, and that's all happening from the cloud. Unbelievable. That data has just appeared on our desktop, like I've plugged in a disk. It exists in a data center in the cloud, but we haven't had to download it in order for Premiere now to, to start working with that content. So before we saw VLC, simple example, now we're in Adobe Premiere. And now when I hit play, Premiere is requesting that data from the cloud, just like VLC was before it. Uh, and again, instant, instant um, you know, delivery of that data. We can even see Adobe generating waveforms of the content. So there's some parts of this timeline we've never watched before, but I can still jump to any part of that and hit play, and it you'll see the down. data will come and the waveform will start to get generated. It works in any, uh, any part of the application as well. So here's the project file, and you can see all of these videos are already linked up. There was no need for us to find out, put them somewhere locally, relink, you know, we don't want to do any of that. And we can, you know, just work and double click these files and work with them in any part of the application, jumping to any part of the timeline, even though we were only just granted access to it. So it's amazing, really. And I think it's key to remember as well that this can be taking place anywhere in the world. Absolutely. Uh, if we want to work with a, a content creator in New York tomorrow, all we'd need to do is give them a Lucidlink login, they download the free client, we give them access to the group, and it's like they plug in a disk and there it is. Premiere has no idea, as do you know, DaVinci Resolve yep. and Media Composer or any of the creative tools. We work with any application uh, and the applications perform like the data's already been downloaded, even though we're streaming it on demand. So one other thing when we talk about security is the ability to remove uh, access to data. So let's say we've made our changes and we want to now save them back to the cloud. We could just save our project file, but it's that quick. There's no need to upload the media. There's yep. no need to you know, for someone at the other end to download and relink, it's that quick. We'll just close Adobe Premiere, and there we go. We'll say, right, we've finished the job. Let's remove the Amsterdam editor from the group. Instead of saying, make sure you send the drive back when you finish, make yeah. sure you delete the media, we don't want to lose it. You simply remove them from the group or remove their permissions, and it will instantly update for them wherever they are in the world. And remember, you can have thousands of users working collaboratively in any of the applications um, that are supported by Mac OS, Windows, or Linux. So pretty incredible solution for our customers. A, a really impressive demo, and I hope you guys at home have seen the power that LucidLink can bring in terms of speed, collaboration, the ability to work from anywhere in the world. Thank you so much, Alex, for giving that and explaining what LucidLink is. If you guys want to try this out at home, the kind guys at LucidLink have uh, very kindly given us a 14-day free trial. It's down in the link in the description below. So give it a go. I promise you this will change the way that you work, especially if you work with teams and across the globe. For media, this is key. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, click the like button because that really does help. If you want to keep up to date with all of my action from IBC 2023, hit the playlist in the top right-hand corner now. And if you want to be notified as I upload new videos from IBC, hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell.